Hi everybody, Matt back with you. Hope you're okay. Today's story starts here, Albert Street in Hebden Bridge. And a 14-year-old Matt stood here in 1990 and a car, a chauffeur-driven car, pulled up and stopped here. Out of that car got a very famous person. His flamboyant outfit gave him away immediately. The man in the car was Jimmy Savile. He got out and spoke to some kids who were stood at the other side of the road. They were actually people who were in my class at school. And then he went on his way. The moment that stuck with me forever. I can't remember the specific date. I wasn't sure then why he was in Ebden Bridge. It was only later on that I realised Savile had a huge connection to this valley, but specifically Crag Vale. So I'm now in Crag Vale and I'll be honest I have been in two minds about whether to film this one um, but I think it's a bit of a story of the past that is worth retelling and maybe learning from. Now this is not any kind of attack on the people involved at the time because like me, like probably you unlike the rest of the UK we just didn't know what was going on back then and Savile was a man who pulled the wool over the eyes of everybody he you know it wasn't just the people here in Cragdale who were <laughs> almost kowtowing to the man remember that Savile had his fingers in the pies of Prime Ministers, Royalty, the Pope, everybody fell for it. But we're going back early into Savile's career here at Crag Vale. And behind me is a church called St John the Baptist in the Wilderness. In the late 60s, 1960s, Jimmy Savile had a caravan here outside the Hinchliffe Arms in Craigdale. It's a caravan that stayed there for over 30 years and in more recent times it's been said that it was just one of many places that Savile abused victims. But whilst he was here, the church of St John's ended up vicarless. So guess who took it upon himself to step in and take the place of the vicar? So Samuel did fundraising for the church at that time and there is some silent movie footage of him 
walking with children uh, raising money just a bit further up the road from here that's what the screenshots are from but you can find it online if you're interested however 1969 Boxing Day from here at St John's they decided to film the BBC programme Songs of Praise guess who presented it and preached you guessed it right Samuel was the presenter and it was very strange seeing him dressed in this kind of weird green robe which is apparently what he wore every time he climbed into the pulpit here at St John's It's very odd to think back now that Savile was just allowed to become a preacher here. No formal training or qualifications. A bit like everything else he got involved with. It was purely persuasion and maybe a bit of bullying. I believe the person who became the vicar here also was one of Savile's friends at the time. However, remember, we're going back 50, 60 years here. So, like I mentioned, it's not a, a knock on anybody. Um, the man had great influence. So the only f known photograph of Savile's caravan here is this picture, at where the white van currently is. Just around the corner here is Crag Hall and the gatehouse. Now here's an interesting tale. My granddad was a gardener here for Crag Hall back in, I would imagine, the 1960s. And my dad, as a teenager, lived here and went to Calder High School. And that's where he met mum. So she was here quite a lot as well. And one night there was a knock on the door of the house and the person at the door was Jimmy Savile. He'd come there because he said a girl had gone missing on the moors and he was going round the village getting men together to launch a search party to set off and look for the missing girl. And they found her not long after, a group of them, which included my dad. Now, of course, back then, at that time, it would have been, oh, well done, Jimmy, another great deed done. And it's only after allegations came out that the story recalled back to me that I'd known as a child that my dad had always told me how sinister it now seems. Who was that child? Were they in the caravan? Had they escaped the caravan? which is literally, Dad was here, Savile was just down here. <sighs> we call it a different time, but yeah, it's really important. Things like this never happen again.
Samuel died on the 29th of October 2011, two days before his birthday. So yes, if you think about that, it does mean that Samuel was born on Halloween. At the time there were many tributes, even I posted something on Facebook saying rest in peace. The vicar the Church of St John's also posted a tribute in the newsletter, one of thousands that were done at the time. The man even had a state funeral in Leeds and all his clothes auctioned off. His massive gravestone was at a cemetery in Scarborough, right at the top, and he was buried standing up so that, you know, in the afterlife he could look out to the sea. On that gravestone it said it was good whilst it lasted. One year later, the public perception of Savile was very different. His headstone was removed and he was known as one of the UK's most prolific sex offenders, having abused children, hundreds of children, for over 50 years. I'm not sure if that abuse started here in Cragvale. It was the 60s before Top of the Pops, Jimmel Fix It, etc. The abuse definitely was happening whilst he was here. Being a church warden, getting the keys to the church was just the first key on a bunch that grew and grew over the years ahead, including the likes of Leeds General Infirmary. Stoke Mandeville Hospital. Today Jimmy's reputation is a bit like this building, ruined forever. Now I'm not sure if anybody's covered the Cragvale story before. There are other versions of stories with Savile on YouTube which people still film today. Things like his house in Roundhay Park, or his house in Glencoe in Scotland, or they even go to the site of his former grave. We're going to be covering one of those in a few weeks' time because, as you know, if you watch our channel, we are paying tribute to some of the victims of the Yorkshire Ripper. One of those victims, his third victim, was found in Round Hay Park, and literally across the road was Savile's flat. Savile's passing meant that hundreds of victims never saw justice, that they never saw the man that had abused them go to jail for his crimes. Perhaps the only positive thing to come from the whole Savile story is the message, believe her or believe him. Most of Savile's victims never came forward at the time because the comment was, who would believe me? Today is most likely you'll be believed. 
Please don't suffer in silence. Speak to someone, speak to the police or a friend. Who knows, it could be the only way to stop somebody committing those crimes. Take care, guys. Later this week, it's Dracula in Whitby and Billy Liar locations. But if you have been affected by anything in the video today, I apologise firstly. Please, please speak out. And we'll see you very soon for the next video. Take care. See you soon. Bye.